let's start with the next thing now. Uh, it's going to be fairly quick. Both straightforward concepts and systems of equations. What's a system of an equation? System of equation. System of equations basically is two or more equations that have the same set of variables. Okay. So simultaneous equations, basically. This is just another name for that. Okay. So you can have two simultaneous equations. Mostly, that's what it is going to be. For example, if you have an if you have two equations like these, you know how to solve these equations by substitution, by elimination, right? All of you know how to do that. Both those methods, substitution and elimination. So you have the substitution method where you make one variable the subject, put that in the other equation, right? You know that. You have the elimination method where you make the coefficients the same in both equations and try to cancel or try to eliminate one of the variables, okay? Then in systems of equations, you get similar questions again, infinitely many solutions, no solutions. Remember the conditions for that. When do you get infinitely many solutions? If you have these two equations, how do we know that they have, that these have infinitely many solutions? It's the same equation. Remember the condition was in order to get infinitely many solutions, the coefficients should all be the same. But here the coefficients, coefficients are not all the same. But can you convert one equation to a form such that the equations become the same? The coefficients become the same. If you multiply this equation by 2, that gives you 6x plus 4y equal to 10. And that's exactly the second equation as well. All the terms are exactly the same. They're identical. So this has infinitely many solutions. When you try to plot this, you'll get the same line. A q for this line are yogi. Okay. If you have these two equations, 3x minus 5y equals 8 and mx minus ny equal to 32. You are given that the system has infinitely many solutions. Can you find the value of m plus n? Since you have infinitely many solutions, what does that mean? The terms should all be the same. Can we just compare m with 3 here and n with 5? Can we do that? Not yet. We first have to make the, uh, these constant terms the same. Jo pata hai aapko, usko same karna. So constant is known here. So that should be the same in both of them. So you can multiply this first equation by 4 and that gives you 12x minus 20y equals 32. And now you can compare the two. m equals 12 and n equals 20. So what's m plus n then? It's 32. Is that all right? Make sense? Okay. When do you get no solutions? Again, we've discussed this before as well. When all the other coefficients are the same, but the constant is different. Okay. That's the only difference. Now you can look at these two equations. All the other coefficients are equivalent. Just the constants are different. Okay. So these have no solutions. They'll be parallel lines. So you'll have lines like these here. Parallel lines that do not intersect anywhere. So they have no solution. Make sense? Now, if you, ha if you have these two equations, the system has no solution. What's the value of A that you get? What's the value of A? What's the value of A? Zenith, what's the value of A? Ariba, what's the value of A? Yes? 16. Does everyone ag agree to that? 
minus ax minus 12y equals 15. And the other equation is 4x plus 3y equals negative 2. The constants have to be different, right? We can't do anything to the constants here. But these terms have to be identical. We know the coefficients of y in both of them. So we have to match them first. Second equation, if we minus 4, se multiply kar de, this is 3, we want to make it minus 12. Multiply this equation with minus 4. What does that give you? Multiply this by minus 4. What do you get? Minus 16x minus 12y equals 8. Now, minus 12y and minus 12y, they are matching. So now we can compare the two equations. So the value of a, therefore, should be 16. a is 16. Is that OK? When do you get no solutions? When the coefficients of x and y are all the same, but the constants are different. Now we have these two equations. We need to compare them such that the coefficients of x and y are equal. Y ka coefficient hume pata hai. This is negative 12. In the other equation, it's 3. Since both of them are known coefficients, we need to match them. So we multiply this equation by minus 4 to match them first, and then we compare the x coefficient. Is this OK? Now, sometimes you get word problems in systems of equations as well. So you have to make some equations and then solve them yourself. So let's look at this example. A group of 30 students ordered lunch. Each student got either burger or salad. The group spent $160. How many students ordered burgers? Let me find this. What are the equations that we get from this? What should be the variables? What should be the variables? Sorry? X and Y, but what do, what do they represent? X can represent kare, Y can represent kare. Five or six? Does X represent five and Y represent six? X and Y are supposed to be variables. X represents burger students. It's the, X represents the students who order burgers. Yeah. It does not represent burgers. It represents the students who represent who order burgers. Okay. So X is the students who ordered burgers. Okay. Now, what about? Y, that's the students who ordered a salad. What equations can we make out of this now? 5x plus 6y equals 162. X plus y equals 30. Solve them simultaneously, get the values of x and y. Okay? So sometimes you have to make equations yourself and then solve them. All right? Okay. Let's look at this now. We need to solve the system and find the value of a minus b. Now, can anyone suggest me how to approach this? Find the values of a and b and then subtract them. That's one possibility. Elimination. Yeah, we can use any method to find the values of a and b and then find a minus b. Is, is there something that we can do that's more efficient? 
sometimes when they don't ask you for values of a variable, like they're not asking you for A or B here, they're instead asking you for A minus B. You can try to convert these equations to a form such that you get A minus B somehow there. Can you do that here? Can you make it A minus B somehow? A minus B kisi tarah se aasakta? Directly just. Three common, okay. What does that leave us with? Three into A plus B. Then? A plus 2B, okay. Still, uh, equals 13. How, how is that helpful? Then? You see, this is 3A, this is minus 2A. This is 6B, this is minus 7B. If you add these two equations, 3A plus 6B equal to 13, 2A mi minus 2A minus 7B equal to 7. If you were to just add these two equations, you get A minus B equal to 20. Now this is something that you have to spot like this sometimes. Okay. Now the longer method, of course, would of course of course be that you solve the equations, find the values of a and b, then subtract them. That will work. But whenever they ask you something like this, some expression, you can often just find that expression directly without actually finding these individual values. So I've just added these two equations, and that gives me a minus b. Is that okay? Let's try this. What are we looking for? The value of 3y minus 0.78. Is there a quick way of doing this? without having to solve both equations and finding values of x and y. We know the value of this whole thing. This is four. We can just replace that in this equation. Remember the second equation is? 3 into 0 0.05x plus 0 0.8 and then plus 5 into 3y minus 0.78 equals 20. We want to find the value of this thing. We know the value of this thing already. It's the other equation that we're given. We can just replace this by 4 and we get 3 into 4 plus 5 into 3y minus 0.78 and now just make this thing the subject. 3, 3y minus 0.78, this goes to the other side, becomes minus 20 minus 12 divided by 5. And that will give you 8 over 5, which is 1.6. That's the value of this whole thing. You were looking for the value of this expression, and you could see that clearly in this equation directly, right? You can think of it like this, or you could use a substitution as well. You could also say that this is maybe A and this is B. And that might make it simpler. Because you would get A equal to 4 and 3A plus 5B equal to 20. That will make it easier to understand. So. You see what I'm doing? I'm calling this thing A, right? This is also A. I'm calling this thing B. So the equations become just this. A equal to four and three A plus five B equals 20. You can just put A equal to four here and that gives you B equal to 1.6. And that's what you're looking for. 
we could use substitution to make it simpler to understand as well. Is that okay? Okay, let's try this. Yeah, okay. So graphically, again, we, we know this. Uh, when we solve a system of equations, what does that represent? That represents the points of intersection, right? So remember this relation between the solutions of a system of equation and their graphs. Points of intersection of equations, they represent the point here, the solution here. Let me show you how this will look like. You have a positive gradient line. So you'll have a line like this. The first one, minus 5x plus y equals minus 7. And this other line, that's a negative sloping line. It might look like this. This is minus 3x minus 2y equals minus 12. This point is 2, 3. So the solution that you get here, that represents the point of intersection graphically, okay? Achha. Let's try this quickly. How would you solve equations like these? Y equals 3X and X squared plus 2Y squared equals 76. Sometimes instead of having two linear equations, you end up having one linear equation and one curve. Sometimes you have one linear equation and one curve. In cases like these as well, you can use the substitution method. Okay, you can use the substitution method just like it works for linear functions. It works for non-linear functions as well. So what you do is you put y equal to 3x in the second equation and that gives you x squared plus 2y or x squared plus 2 into 3x whole squared equals 76. Let's solve this equation x squared plus 2 into 9x squared equals 76, which is 19x squared equal to 76, x squared equals 4, x equals plus minus 2, put that back in the other equation, y equals 3 into 2, or y equals 3 into minus 2, you get y equal to 6, or y equal to minus 6. So substitution works for non-linear functions as well. Okay? Now it says, what is a possible value of y, what would you write? Any one of these two, six or minus six, okay? So substitution works in cases like these as well. Again, here as well, you can try this. This function and this function, they intersect at the points x, y. What are the possible values of y? How do you solve this? You put y equal to x plus one in this first equation and just solve that, you'll find the values of x. Once you have the values of x, put them back in this equation to get the corresponding values of y. So just like you solve linear equations simultaneously, sometimes you can solve non-linear equations as well. Mostly you'll have one of them a straight line and the other a curve. So from the straight line, you make one variable the subject, put that in the other one, and then solve it. Okay? We're almost ending, just a couple of minutes. Yeah, just one last example, one minute. The given system of equations is represented in this graph. So you have this system of equations. Now it's a weird looking set of equations. Y square equals X and Y equals modulus of X. How many solutions does, this, does the system have? Basically just look at the points of intersection. Okay, this is one graph, the modulus graph. And this is the other graph a curve, at how many points do they intersect? Two points, one is this, and the other is this. So you say there are exactly two solutions, okay?